Happy spring, everybody. Hopefully everyone's having a great gardening season. I'm here at the Earth Friendly Organic Shelf at Kennedy's Country Gardens. Um, I'm going to discuss today the caterpillar situation. I'm going to try to give you some information and um, hopefully you can deal with the caterpillar in an earth friendly way. Um, there are several options, uh, but let me first tell, talk about the caterpillar a little bit. Um, the one that we hear most about right now is called the winter moth. Uh, the winter moth is a little green inchworm that can be very damaging and often is hard to diagnose or see and oftentimes we don't um, see the caterpillar, we just see the holes in the leaves. Uh, but there are several different types of caterpillars, but basically all of them can be controlled um, using an earth friendly, earth friendly product. Excuse me. Um, Caterpillars generally damage um, a variety of things, uh, including rose bushes, birch trees, maples, crab apples, flowering cherries, um, and, the, and, the, and there's more. Uh, blueberry shrubs are also um, another uh, plant that can be affected, and um, we want to take care of the problem before it gets uh, to be uh, a, a situation where the, the plants are damaged year after year, they, they can be weakened. Um, so, as far as earth-friendly options, um, one particular product that we've had on the shelf for years is called BT. BT is basically a bacteria-type disease that will um, be harmful to caterpillars, but very few other things. And it's a very useful product, it's a very safe product, um, and basically what you're doing is applying it to the leaf, and, and the caterpillar is going to crawl up, take a bite out of the leaf. It's kind of like putting mayonnaise on a sandwich. You want to make sure that there is some of this on the leaf, uh, when the caterpillar eats it. If it rains right after you apply it, it's probably not going to be as effective. So we encourage you to use this when looking at the weather forecast where you have a few days where it's going to be nice weather. Um, or if it does rain after you apply it, then you need to reapply it. Um, BT is very effective when the caterpillars are small. Uh, the downside about BT is it's not very effective on caterpillars after they've been growing for a couple weeks. So you need to use it early. Um, so that's the, the, the good side about uh, the BT, it's very safe for the, for the applicator and uh, for the environment, um, but does not work on the bigger caterpillars. Now, uh, the newer product that's been out for a few years now, it's called Spinosad. Um, this is a brand called Captain's Jacks, and the name came because they found this under, uh, they found this particular type of bacteria um, underneath a rum distillery, so they thought they'd have a little fun with it and call it Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. Um, and um, it's not something you want to uh, associate with eating by any means, but it is uh, very effective on edible plants, and um, it, it, it does a better job on the caterpillars, especially when they are in a larger, or older, more mature state. Um, much more effective than the BT, and this could be used when the caterpillars are young or old, and it has a much broader spectrum. It works on other insects as well. The downside about having the broader spectrum um, is that it is toxic to bees, so we encourage people to try not to spray their plants when they're in bloom if possible. So if you have a beautiful weeping cherry and you want to spray it, um, you try to spray it either before it flowers or after all the petals have fallen, um, and um, you're going to... Uh, you're going to, it's going to be a better thing for the environment because the bees are extremely important. If you do have to spray when the trees in bloom, we do recommend going back to using the BT. Uh, but if not, Captain Jack's is a great product and uh, it comes in several forms. Um, this is the ready to uh, spray, ready to use spray, and it's very convenient. It has a little bit of concentrate and you fill it up with water um, and you just pull the trigger and get the plant wet. You just need a very light mist over the entire plant, get the foliage wet, you don't have to do anything further, you don't have to get the, the ground wet or anything like that. Uh, a little bit of spray on this will go a long way. Um, if you have more area to cover and a lot of plants that happen to be damaged, again you don't need to spray everything in the yard, but you may want to be spraying the particular things I mentioned. Um, this is a type of product that you can just hook to the end of the hose. Um, it has a couple of formats that you can twist this nozzle and you can have a, a, a narrow jet spray that would go up high into some trees. Uh, it'll go as high as the pressure in your hose will allow. And then they also have the fan shape which is preferable because you can get a wider coverage 
uh, when you're spraying. And again, just a quick little dose on, the, on each plant and it will do a very effective job. Um, the, the other way to do this is to use um, the concentrate. The concentrate is always less money um, and you're mixing this with water. One way to mix it with water is using an end of the hose uh, attachment. Be sure that you're using an end of the hose attachment, uh, that you can set the dial, okay? Uh, very important, uh, the miracle Grow containers, the old uh, varieties, do not allow you to set the dial. This dial uh, will basically tell uh, it what to, uh, how many ounces per gallon or how many tablespoons or teaspoons. It does the math for you right here on the dial. And for every, uh, say, two ounces of spray of concentrate, it will uh, suck that up into one gallon of water. So every time a gallon of water goes through, it, it will take up the amount that you set it. Um, and basically that information is on the package and basically what you want to do is dump in the concentrate into the bottom of the container full strength and you need to make sure that you always have enough to cover the bottom of the straw um, if you end up spraying your tree and then you decide to hit it one last time but you find out afterwards that you didn't have enough uh, the chemical covering the bottom of the straw, then you probably just sprayed water on it and washed off uh, the insecticide off the tree and your caterpillars are not going to be uh, affected by that, so that's not a good thing. Um, that's the one thing to keep in mind. The other thing you want to know about this is what's neat is you can take whatever's left over because it's still the concentrate. It does not put water into the tank. It sucks this out of the tank, so uh, the concentrate is not affected, so you can actually put it back into uh, the concentrated bottle, um, and, and that's a that's a, a nice option. Um, the other option for spraying is using one of these handy tank sprayers. Um, it does not as shoot as far as your end of the hose sprayer, so it's limited in that capacity. Um, and the other thing you need to know about this is, um, although you have the flexibility to bring this anywhere you want, you don't have the hose pulling you back. Um, and it has a nice fine mist so it doesn't use as much product um, but you need to remember that uh, you need to gauge about how much how many gallons of product you're going to use because when you're done you want to make sure you've used it all up um, and sometimes you'll, you have some left over so if you're in that situation just go ahead and reapply on some of the, the, the trees and shrubs um, that need it because you don't want to be pouring anything down the drain even if it's an organic um, so that's the best thing to, to do is try to gauge that. But I like the end of the hose sprayer. I think it's the easiest um, way to use it. Uh, that is pretty much all I have to say about the Caterpillar situation. If you need more information, you can always visit us here at the store. Um, you can call us at 781-545-1266. And our website has more information as well, www.kennedyscountrygardens.com. Thank you.